Hello, Nick here. Just got a new radio. And I uh, wanted to I'll probably be doing a couple videos on it because it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And so far, it's, it's proven to be everything that I thought it wasn't going to be. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about it. Uh, got it today. And it's, it's brand new. It's an Icom 9500. Uh, brand new. You saw the in the corner there, The it's got the latest firmware, which doesn't really mean a lot because the last time they updated the firmware and this thing was a long, long, long time ago. But I don't know if maybe they haven't done some things to it over the course of the last 10, 15 years or what, however long it's been. Because I've read all the reviews on these, just like everyone else has. And there's a guy, N6, NGO or whatever, I can't, I'm, I can't remember. He's got a website, he tests all kinds of radios. And he didn't have a lot of good stuff to say about this radio, or at least compared to the ICOM 8600. He didn't like this radio. He said there's a lot of things on it that, were not, that didn't work right. I, I'm not seeing that. Um, we'll get through it. You guys make up your own mind. So, uh, let's, so this video is basically going to be about how the controls and how, you know, things it does and how it works. And then maybe tomorrow I'll do a video comparing it to, uh, uh, some other receivers. So anyway. To, uh, spirit of creation. So it's 2244 Central Standard Time, Dallas, Texas. And um, we're listening to the 49 meter band. And uh, this time of night, it, there's a lot, usually a lot of stuff on it, as you can see. And uh, all right, so let's just start with the display. So even though this radio is new, Technically, it's not. Technologically, it's not new. I think the first versions of this came out like in 2002, so literally 20 years ago. Um, so this this screen is is a couple of generations old. Uh, the scope is not real time. It's not terrible, okay? But if you've got like I've got an FTDX 101. I mean, that makes this thing looks like, you know, they're not really even comparable. But in 2002, this was the shiznit, okay? There was no FTDX 101 in 2002. So, uh, and the screen, I mean, it still works. I mean, it still, it still does a lot of good things and in, in, uh, it's very productive and it helps you to uh, do what you got to do. I mean, it's it's way better than not having one. Way, 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 way better. So if I say the Watkin Johnson 8711 is the best radio ever made, um, doesn't have a, any kind of a scope. If I want to find weak signals, I either got to just sit there and spin the dial real slow and spend hours looking for them or go to another radio with a scope and find them. Well... You might not be able to find the weakest signals in the world because we don't have a waterfall, but you're going to find 90% or more of all the signals that are out there. Uh, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the scope. So the scope has a bunch of settings. You can change the color. You can change the scan speed. Um, you can change the, the span all the way up to 10 megahertz wide, 5 megahertz on either side of center. Um, you can, um, uh, well, so, so if you hit bandwidth and speed, so, uh, the speed is the, the, I guess that's, you call it the scan speed. So if you slow it down, see that it goes, you know, re really, I don't know, just anything to say other than just really slow. And I just put it on maximum. And then bandwidth, I think bandwidth has to do with resolution. 
All right, so look, look what happens when I increase the bandwidth. See how those blob, they get blobby and soft. And if I decrease the bandwidth, that's where I get my sharpest peaks and points. So I'm, in, I'm running it maximum speed, minimum bandwidth. And then so this exit set button is kind of like a back button. Changes the screen here. Now, this... Uh, Resolution change, so when you change your span, so to hit the span, any of these buttons you hit typically opens a sub-menu over here. So, um, increasing it, so there's one megahertz. 10 megahertz, minus five, plus five. There's the medium wave band. <laughs> so, All right, so uh, one megahertz, plus or minus 500. Now if I go down one more to a half a megahertz total, still have a, a, a lively scope. But now watch what happens when I go down even more. It starts doing that. I guess when you try to zoom in and get closer, it, it slows it down. I don't know if the computer it doesn't have enough processing power or whatever, but so... While it's still there and still works, you just got to deal with that kind of stuff. So I got no problem leaving it at plus or minus 250. And uh, you can attenuate the, um, let's just go back. So uh, the attenuation is not, the, the radio attenuation is up here. The attenuation here is just for the scope. So read read it up here. So we're currently at 10 dB attenuation. So let's go back to zero. So no attenuation of the scope. So you get everything, maximum spikes, maximum noise floor. I mean, noise floor didn't change. It's just the indication on the scope is changing. So add some attenuation to the scope and it drops down that, the, I, I call it the grass, the uh, the noise floor. So you could try to make that as small as you want. 30 dB is the maximum attenuation. And I, I, I change this for the different bands based on, you know, what time of day it is or what's coming in or what's happening. So, and I'm sure that's why it's here readily accessible so that you can do stuff like that. So, um... Right, what else? Uh, center fix. So, so uh, we're on uh, center, which means if you tune, you're you're always in the center, dead center. If you hit this one, then you you're you've got this screen, and then you can go find all these other signals like that. But you can also go off spec and see it gives you the arrow there, but you can't see where you're going. So the screen doesn't follow you if you go off. Now, one way around that is to, is to uh, change the span. So now, see that you can go way down oh and by the way this dial <laughs> this is the best most awesome dial i've ever seen in my life all right and you can change the inc the so like when you turn it faster it tunes faster well there's different steps of that so i can actually make it go from like 10 i could do this and go from like 10 megahertz to one megahertz just that little flick so, but that's too much for me. So I turned it down to something kind of usable. But, uh, all right, so let's put this back. Span, I, I like this uh, one here. And, um, oh, then you can also, like, while we're on the VFO knob, so there's a, a slider under here to increase tension, common on lots of radios. 
but this also has a click feature. Now, that's not uncommon either. A lot of radios have a, 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 a detented knob that'll click. So like with each tuning step, it'll click. Well, this one, you don't have to, you don't get that from sliding the slider. Listen. And you see the button lights up, click, 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 click. Coolest thing since sliced bread. Press and hold that. And that quarter tune is like, in certain modes, if you press that, it turns your tuning step, it quarters it to make it finer. So, but if you press and hold it, you get your clicks. Uh, while we're over here, let's look at this. So this is scanning stuff, memory stuff. This thing has so many memories, it's scary. Um, let's look at the auto-tune. So this middle button says AFC, then it also says auto-tune. So it, if within 5 kilohertz on AM or within... It's either one or two kilohertz on SSB. So let's go here. So we are four kilohertz off that signal. Boom. Auto tune. Awesome. Uh, speech button. I don't know if you could hear it. I could hear it. it was a female voice reading the meter and the frequency. Tuning steps. So you can increase or decrease your tuning steps. And there's a little arrow here that'll follow it. Obviously, your keypad, enter. Uh, you switch between your memory mode or your VFO mode. This has 10 VFOs. Um, the memories... There's there's banks of memories and like each bank can hold a hundred memories, so if you want to group them like that, and then so like we're in VFO, so if you switch to memory mode, it says memory, and then the sub menu tells you what was on your VFO. And if you come back to VFO, then that little sub thing down there tells you what's on the current memory. So we are on group one, channel three. That's what one hundred three means. And it also shows it over here. And then this button here, the, the internal knob is the channel number. And the out one is the bank. So that's bank one, two, three. And then that's the memory one. And then to, to store memories from the VFO, all you do is put it where you want it, set, get your settings set, and then just hit memory right. MW, memory right. That's it. Well, you have to make sure it's on the... The bank and the number that you want. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, modes down here. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, all right. So, scope, you've got um, a mini scope. So, that, and then you can put other stuff here. Like, you could put a memory display here of all the channels. You could put. Uh, a settings thing to tell you settings. You could, I mean, you, so you can put multiple stuff up on the screen here. And I'm not even sure I figured out yet how to do all that stuff yet. Or you can press and hold this and get the big scope. The uh, S meter can be a DBM meter. Gives you the readout of everything that's going on. So, yeah, you got your typical ICOM three filters. One, two, and three. So, and you can go into the filter meeting the filter menu and set each one to whatever you want. I got, I like my AMs at nine, six and 3.8. And then you can select roofing filters too. You can't do that on an 8600, the roofing filters. Uh, and, the, and then uh, you can do the uh, shape too. Uh, not on AM, but I think on SSB you can. But anyway, so. You, you you can select your filters here, but it also tells you what they are up here. So bandwidth nine kilohertz, that's the shift for like this up here. Your uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. 
and then you can see the picture of your thing. So in case you shift it, see how you can you can at a glance see what you're doing. Anyway, so your filters nine, six. All right, so filter, we'll leave it on filter two. Uh, you can pick your AGC, fast, medium, or slow, or you can turn the AGC off, and then you see you got an AGC knob here, and you can actually adjust your AGC speed. This is pass band tuning or shifting. Um, so you watch this and it and, and you can see what it does. See that? And then this as soon as you come off a of center, this light lights up to let you know you've moved it. And if you want to just go back to center, just press and hold it till the light goes off and it squares everything away. Filter attenuator, so you got multi position attenuator, preamp, two position preamp. Atten there's four antenna jacks on the back, three for HF, two for UHF, VHF. Now, I know that, so that sounds weird, but so HF1, HF2, HF3, HF3 also doubles as. UHF one or VHF one, and then there's a VHF two. It's a little bit complicated, but it allows you to have three HF antennas and two UHF VHF antennas. So that's my Wellbrook on one. That's my N-fed long wire on two. That's my. Um, so that's actually a UHF. Uh, that's my. Uh, it's like a scanner antenna up in the attic, like kind of like a disc cone. So HF1 is the Wellbrook. Um, dimmer. This gets you into like uh, setup menus and stuff like that. Oh, there's a there's a recorder, pretty cool voice rec uh, uh, content recorder. So it does the normal recording. So like if you press it for one second and hold it for one second, it'll just start recording. All right, just like any other radio that records will do. And it will record it to the internal compact flash, or you can plug a USB jumper in the back and put it on there. Now, what this does do that I've never seen before is there's what they call a short record, where if you just tap it, it will actually go back and record the last 30 seconds of what played. So it kind of like stores everything in a buffer. So if you're trying to DX and you miss a call sign and you need to go back and see if you can hear it again, all you do is short tap that and you can set how far back it goes, five, 10, 15, 20 seconds. It goes all the way up to 30 seconds max. And it will store that short Meant that short record, they call that the short record, in the um, compact flash until you turn the radio off. And it only, so you can only do one, right? You can't store multiple. That one will only do one. And so you can record it. And then when you turn the power off to the radio, it wipes that, it goes away. But the other ones, like if you press it, hold it for one second, it'll record whatever you're listening to, to uh, the memory. And then uh, press it, hold it again, and it'll stop. And then go to play, and you get your menu of all your recordings, just like all the other radios. Uh, so you've got... Uh, so I can't even see these buttons right now because I'm behind the camera, and I had to back the camera up kind of far. So I know that this is notch. So I think there's an auto notch, AN auto notch, and then there's a manual notch. So it's a manual notch one and a manual notch two. And then you can do your manual notch. You can adjust them from here. There's a noise blanker, a two position noise blanker. Then there's noise reduction. 
and you can adjust the noise reduction with this outer dial. And then you can adjust the inner one on the uh, noise blanker. AFRF treble bass. Uh, squelch. Oh, I already told you about the AGC. You can turn the AGC off and you can, or you could actually set a custom AGC with this knob and dial it in. So, uh, yeah, that, and those are just the things that I know about after reading the manual, you know, and playing with this thing for a couple hours. I'm sure there's more stuff that I'm either glossing over or missing. But let's tune around a little bit. As your American dance stay, instituted by the foreign ministers of the nations of Iberoamerica to these different places. And we know on July 2nd, 1776, Congress voted to declare independence. We have wept cut tears of sorrow. They go, God. Combat risks coming from abroad and identify traitors and saboteurs. We also said the special services should ensure the safety of people living in the parts of Ukraine that not also has a AM sync. In some of these areas, most notably Kherson, Russia has recently suffered significant military reverses. Charles Haviland reporting. This is David Harper in London with the latest world news from the BBC. So the sync works very similar to the ICOM 8600 where when you engage it, you can either have dual sync, upper sync, or lower sync. Um, uh, I've heard guys say that the sync on this is worthless. I read it on that online review, and I don't know. I've been playing with it for a couple hours. I'm going to just turn it on and off here and let you guys kind of make up your own mind. I think it, it's it's way better than a lot of radios. Might not be the best one ever made, but uh, I don't know. You guys make up your own mind. I'm also going to play with, I'm, so I'm going to stop talking and just do this stuff. But just so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to play with the sync. So watch this to see what I'm doing. And then I'm also going to turn the uh, noise reduction, the NR, the, the digital noise reduction. I'm going to turn that in and out, and I'm going to adjust the threshold of it. Okay, so... We'll start with the sink. Clockwise is minimum noise reduction, and the more clockwise you go, it brings it all in. Max sounds like they're underwater. Halfway. Congressional inquiry in Washington has decided it wants a number of criminal charges to be brought against former President Donald Trump. 
for more than 18 months investigation into the riot which saw Trump supporters storm Congress on January the 6th, 2021. Let's try ECSS. The block for transfer of power. I believe we're two years later. This is still a time of reflection and reckoning. If we are to survive as a nation of laws and democracy, this can never happen again. How do we stop it? This committee will lay out a number of recommendations in this final report. But beyond any specific details and recommendations we present, there's one factor I believe is most important in preventing another January 6th accountability. Well, Donald Trump continues to deny any wrongdoing and assert the inquiry is an attempt to block him from running again as Republican presidential candidate. But will the outcome of this inquiry result in any real prosecution attempt against the former president? For an assessment, I spoke earlier with Professor Lauren Wright from Princeton University and the author of Star Power, American Democracy in the Age of Celebrity Candidates. The committee's been building up to this for quite a while, months and months, uh, thousands of interviews, and so, you know, there was a reporting I was consuming just like... Building up to this for quite a while, months and months, uh, thousands of interviews. That was that short playback where it backed up and recorded behind itself. I tuned off so that they wouldn't be doing anything until I hit play and you guys could see that it was actually playing from the memory and not from the VFO. I think the hope of the committee is that the DOJ will consider that evidence and those recommendations and take it very seriously. But as someone who's studying the presidency, I would just urge to consider that the bar for criminal charges for the Department of Justice is very, very high. And even though the ideal is that Trump will be considered just the same. So if you watch any of my other videos, you know that this is that beacon I'm always messing around with. Really weak. And uh, I, I just try to get in on all my radios. Some get it. Most, most of them, my premium receivers, all my premium receivers get it, but they get it to varying levels. Roofing filters you can adjust, the shape, sharp or soft, the width. When you're in CW mode, you can hit pitch, and then you can adjust this. They call it the CW pitch, like the tone. I've never got this signal this good on any of my radios, Watkin Johnson included. But maybe it's just tonight. Who knows? We'll find out when I set this on the table right next to the WJ and they both lift their skirts and show you what they got. Sorry, that was crude.
until we see the end of the story here. FM broadcast, the reaction from, uh, the Republican wide Party, FM, like you said, one filter Trump only, 180 uh, losing kilohertz. With, this is a know, very within, weak station I was listening to it because they played the BBC well. News. How are they likely to react to this? Free phone call away. So pick up an injury. I might steal your idea and throw it on Twitter to get a few more followers. <laughs> My gosh. But yeah, Pete Schrager, you found this earlier. Artie's the idea guy tonight, boys. He's the idea guy. That's right. only half a megabyte. The big kind of storylines in this Jalen Hurts injury doesn't really have too terribly much to do with where the, the Eagles are. Five the megabyte. They, there's five very megahertz. Safe in the one seed right now and very safe in the, in the Ten NFC megahertz. East, the MVP conversation has been wild. So this week, Jalen Hurts was uh, minus 175. And I keep refreshing this, and uh, I keep kind of looking at it. This week, he was minus 175. Currently, plus 550. Airband, you're not going to hear anything at uh, 11 p.m., after 11 p.m. Well, maybe. Maybe. Wait it out for a few more seconds, see if anything shows up. We can also spread it out. There's a signal there. strong enough to break squelch. Yeah, it could be another 15 minutes before they start talking again. But anyway... Yeah, this thing goes up to like 3.3 gigahertz, 3.3, yeah, gigahertz, 3,300 megahertz. Um, let's see. So as far as controls go, that's pretty much it. Oh, let's just touch a little bit on... Um, Let's, uh, so he's must be pretty far away or something. Um, uh, long wave beacon was um, That's the Wellbrook. And fed long wire. I can hear it. And at different times of the day, this long wire will bring that in better. That's the disc cone. That's the Wellbrook. It's crackly because the weather's bad out here. So, to, to, like I said, it has 10 VFOs. So, like, uh, zero VFO is the first one. And so you hit the number. 
and then uh, so one VFO. Arms. I say that a lot. There's. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, um, so we tried the, the sink and the noise reduction and it didn't make it worse. I think the sink actually helped a little. And the noise reduction did too, but you got to juggle the, the threshold of it and keep it way down so that you don't sound like you're going underwater. I love this dial. Oh, and uh, I don't know if you all noticed, but 5085, well, it's not on now, but it's back on the air. 5.085 W. I forget the call sign. Is it either RMI or TWR? I can't remember, but it was off the air for a couple of months. And I remember reading an article on short SWLING that uh, the guy ran out of money or something or had problems. Maybe it was from the hurricane because they're based out of Florida, I think. So, but anyway. But they're back on the air. To me, that sounds better on sync than it did on AM. And that sounds better than it did. I mean, if I if I really wanted to listen to this content, which I don't, but if I wanted to listen to this, this makes it easier to understand. So whoever's saying that the noise reduction and the sync doesn't work on this 9500, I don't know, maybe they just got a really old one. So, all right, we're at 39 minutes. Uh, we've checked most of the controls, at least the controls that I understand and, and know about. Um, the next video we'll do, uh, we'll do a uh, um, comparison. So I had a request from one of my friends to compare this to the Watkin Johnson 8711. And... Um, also to the ICOM 9000, which was the predecessor to this radio. So I'll do that. I will do one of each. And since the ICOM is sitting right next to the Rody Schwartz EK 070, I, I don't see a problem with having that turned on while we're doing it, right? So 
maybe we'll sneak a little of that in there. Um, oh, let me show you how I got it hooked up. So I have heard, because I got on that, uh, the, the, the Google forum or something about the 9500 and everybody talks about how these things run really, really hot from their power internal power supply. So it has a jack for an ex, a DC. It, it'll accept the DC power supply. So that's what I did. I just uh, got a power cable to hook onto that. Let's get up and go over here. Which is this one. And then, well, here's my three antennas. So antenna one, antenna two, and antenna three. And antenna three is um, can either be HF3 or it can be UHF1. And then there's the fourth antenna over there. And tons of other connections. But there, I'm running it off my Astron uh, variable power supply. It's a linear power supply that's variable from like zero to 32 volts. And then you can, so on this one, you can adjust the voltage. Let me try to get this camera down here. Maybe you can see where, I don't know if you can read that. We're running about, I mean, it's as close to 13.8 as I could get it. And then this is the amperage. You can dial the amperage up and down too. And then this fan on this, because apparently, now it's not really hot. One side gets a little warm, but the fan on this comes on and off. But now the fan on this does not come on at all. And this is not hot. It's barely even warm. So I think that's what I want to do instead of trying to risk burn it up. Because there was a, I think it's Fenu. He's got a website, Fenu Radio, F-E-N-U radio he's got oh my gosh he's got a museum full of radios and it's unbelievable the stuff that that guy has and he said that he actually did a fan modification where he put a different fan on it so that it moved more air and was quieter apparently the fan on this thing is kind of loud so um but anyway i don't even have to worry about that running it off of dc but that's it for now check back later Oh, I also did a, I don't know, I'm hesitant to put it on YouTube. I, I didn't, I videoed myself unboxing this thing. I, I'm, I'm not about unboxing and stuff. It, it, that just sounds kind of pretentious to me. And I don't, I, I, I'm not a, I really don't, I don't know if I want to do it or even publish that video. But my, a couple of my buddies said that this radio is so rare and, and people want to see how it comes packed and what's in the box and that kind of stuff. And I, I'm all about helping out the, the community, you know, that the radio community. So why don't you all, if anybody's interested, post down in the replies if you want me to publish the unboxing video. It's about four minutes long. Um, and, and I'll do that. But I, I just, I feel weird doing that, kind of like I'm flexing you know, or something, because this is kind of an expensive radio, and that's not what this is about, okay? This is about the hobby that I love and sharing the coolest stuff in the world. So, anyway, so getting back to this radio, so far, everything I see, I love, absolutely. And I, I knew what some of the shortcomings were coming in, right? So my expectations were managed, but I'm saying at this point, my expectations are exceeded, Okay, the radio is performing above what I thought it was going to do. And I'm very impressed by it. Very impressed. So, all right. Thanks for hanging out.